Smith was born. Because of school differences, the series was halted for 41 years. But the 1948 meeting relaunched an interstate war that would produce some of college football's greatest moments. Alabama coach Bear Bryant did not mince words in his disdain of Auburn. But in 1972, those words fueled the Tigers to victory. He is in for the score. Touchdown, Auburn. Nobody split. Give the ball up and over. And in, I believe. Touchdown. Touchdown, Auburn. The kick is giving air. It has this it. Alabama has the moment. He's going to give it to Tillman on the end around. The 10, the 5. Tillman, he's in. Touchdown! For the Tide and the Tigers, 107 years of tradition, wrapped into a three-hour game, played 365 days a year. Auburn, Alabama, next. We welcome you to the Home Depot College Football on CBS. This afternoon, a renewal of one of the great rivalries in all of college football, Auburn against Alabama. In any normal year, the buildup to this game is extraordinary, and this has not been a normal year. Last night, heroes like Ken Stabler leading on the crowd. This afternoon, the Auburn Tiger Band just outside Bryant-Denny Stadium. And right behind them, the Million Dollar Band of Alabama marching inside to fill Bryant-Denny and to watch Alabama hero Sean Alexander deliver the game ball. It's the Auburn Tigers at eight and two against the Alabama Crimson Tide at three and seven in the Iron Bowl. And for the first time ever at Bryant-Denny Stadium, here come the Auburn Tigers. everybody and welcome to Tuscaloosa. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. It is just impossible to overstate the fervor, the intensity, the anticipation for this game in this state at this site. For the first time since 1901, Auburn has come to Tuscaloosa and they come here with a marvelous record of eight and two. For Alabama, a disastrous year. Preseason rank number three. They've lost their last four. This is the last game for Coach Mike DeBose. But for Auburn, they have much to play for. Eight and two, as we said, a victory today, and they have a chance of getting to the SEC championship game. Obviously, a bowl is in their future. And Todd, there is, when you these two teams get together, so much to play for. Well, it's a great rivalry first, but there's great incentive for both teams. It's different, though. As you mentioned, for Auburn, a chance to go nine and two. Also, maybe a chance to get to Atlanta to play Florida for the SEC championship. Worst case scenario, probably a New Year's Day bowl in the state of Florida. On the Alabama side, forget the first 10 games. It's all about pride right now. This is the final opportunity for these Alabama players to make a statement about their character, make a statement about what kind of competitors they are, and to change the taste in their mouth for the next eight months. We have not been blessed with uh, what one would call spectacular weather. It's cold, it's raining. How does that affect play? I think it'll affect it quite a bit, Vern. It's going to make it more of a mano-a-mano -mano physical game. The game's going to be played for 60 minutes, but we're going to learn a lot about the outcome in the first five minutes. Who is going to set the tempo? Which team is going to be the most physical team? Having said that, I got to believe the edge goes to Auburn right now because of this guy, Rudy Johnson, coming into the game, the SEC's leading rusher. Nine games over 100 yards, and he has a bruising, punishing style that wears on a defense. And believe me, Vern, on a day like this, as cold and as wet as it is, tackling a guy like Rudy is not easy, and it's not a lot of fun. Rivalry weekend around the country. Folks here will argue that this is the greatest rivalry of all. For more on
on that. Here's Jill Arrington. Thanks, Vern. People are talking about all the great rivalries in college football that this country has. You know, the Pac-10, well, they say USC, UCLA is the biggest. The Big Ten, they say Michigan, Ohio State. And Florida, Florida, Florida State are facing off. But here in the Deep South, you can hear the crowd. There's only one rivalry that matters. It's the one that makes families divide. It makes friends fight for 365 days of bragging rights. And that's this Auburn-Alabama game known as the Iron Bowl. There's a lot at stake. Alabama says it's all about their pride. And as Todd said, there's a lot at stake for these two teams. Coach Tupperville told me when he took the job at Auburn, he was told winning championships are great, but coaching legacies are made by beating Alabama. Laverne. Thank you, Jill. It is raw and nasty. Temperature right now at 39 degrees. It should stay there. It is raining at the moment. That should stay there. Alabama leads in this series 37 26 and 1. The last time they played here was on the quad at the university, 1901. Arvin Richard, one of the two deep men. Jason McCadley is also back. And Damon Duvall will kick off for the Auburn Tigers who come in 8-2 and two against the Alabama Crimson Tide. Squib kick taken by Richard at the 5. Avoids a tackle and gets out to the 25-yard line from which play the Alabama Crimson Tide will take over. Keith Evans, number 44, with the opening tackle of the game. Auburn won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So we are underway with Andrew Zell, the junior quarterback who has had a really difficult season. It's been a real tough, and, and really his season has been kind of a microcosm of the Alabama season. Coming in, great expectations, inconsistent performance. He needs to play well, and he needs to play well early today for Alabama. Three wide receivers, left side, two to the right. Zell will throw a first down. Throws it high, but he has a receiver open. That's McCadley, the junior from Oak Bridge, Tennessee. And Alex Lincoln makes the tackle. Now let's check the offensive lineup. Up front, it's Ellington, Redville, Hogan, Alexander, and Cuthbert for the Crimson Tide. Backs and receivers. Ahmad Galloway, McClintock, the fullback. Antonio Carter, Freddie Millens, the wideouts. Sean Draper is the tight end. Backs in the eye, Galloway the deep back on second and three. And Galloway gets the handoff. That's not enough for the first down, but he will be out to the 33. It'll leave a need of about two. Defensively for Auburn, Javor Mills, DeMarco McNeil, Roderick Chambers, and Reggie Torbor up front. Alex Lincoln is the anchor at middle linebacker, Dontarius Thomas, and Rob Pate, another senior. And Casher, Simmons, Walker, and Rodney Creighton in the secondary. Over, we talked about the weather, and the other thing, not only is the ball wet, but when it's cold, it's a little bit harder and more slippery. You really have to pay attention catching it, throwing it, running with it on a day like this. Three wide receivers and a stack wide right. Timeout, Alabama. So we played only uh, a little over a minute. And the Crimson Tide call time. Obviously a sellout crowd inside Bryant Denny Stadium. It was anticipated as many as 25 to 30,000 fans without tickets would gather in the areas surrounding the stadium just to soak up the atmosphere and watch on jumbotrons. 32. Sal in trouble. Gets away from the tackle. Is contacted at the 20, 35 yard line. And it appears he has enough for the first down. A little bit of a statement here. Third down and two. Not feeling confident enough to power a run in there. You're going to go play action. And Andrew Zal you see the strength in his lower body. Andrew Zow weighs 225 pounds. He's got very big, thick legs, and it was that leg strength that got enough for the first down there by Zow. Well, that equals the number of rushing yeah. first downs in the <laughs> loss last week. There were many, many people in this part of the country who felt like Alabama just gave up in that game. 
Well, they went into the game the SEC's leading rusher, and they came out with 31 yards on 28 carries. Now, that's a physical whipping that they took last week. Toss to Galloway, gets a nice block from McClintock, and cuts inside the tight end. A flag is down on the near side of the field. There's Alex Lincoln, a one-time walk-on transfer from Mississippi College. Kind of embodies the spirit and the accomplishment of this Auburn team. Here's the call. Defense, offside, five yards, repeat first down. And in his second season, the head coach of Auburn, Tommy Tuberville, rewarded just last week with an extension, a lucrative extension of his contract, contractual uh, obligation to Auburn. Sixth season as a college coach. He was the head coach at Ole Miss for four years. Five and six last year. Here's the handoff to McClinton. They slip it in between center and right guard, and he picks up a couple. Andrew Zal. Early in this season, there was a big quarterback controversy with this team. Tyler Watts and Zal. Zal was the starter to begin the year. Had a disastrous opening game against UCLA. Watts came on. He he did quite effectively as uh, Watts backup. Well, he did. He he played better coming off the bench. Still hasn't thrown. Didn't throw a touchdown pass as a backup. But this is a kid who played great football last year and just has never gotten on track this season save for a couple moments about the midway point. Low snap, waggle, flip it left side. McCadley gets a good block. And here goes McCadley inside the 30. A gain of 30. Great block by the left tackle, Dante Ellington. Watch Ellington come out here and get the key block. The big fella out there in front of McCadley, and he gets the block that McCadley needs. He's a sprinter now. He ran on the, the Alabama track team last spring, a 4 by 100 relay guy. So if you give him some space, he can make a play. But Dante Ellington sprung that play to the outside. Herschel Bolden, number 25, on the field. Lines up wide left. Dre Fulgham is wide right. They do use a lot of receivers in the Crimson Tide offense. Toss to Galloway. Cut down as he gets near the 26-yard line. Now Harvard is playing Yale this afternoon. Let's get an update from Tim Brando. All right, Vernon Todd on Rivalry Saturday. Rashad Bartholomew, five-yard touchdown run. His second of the day passing Dick Duran to become Yale's all-time leading rusher in the game. It's Yale, Pennsylvania, and Cornell 42-7 to the winner of that game, the Ivy League title. All right, Tim. Second down here. Backs in the eye. Play fake. Zal still has it. Gets a brush block, goes deep. Double coverage. That one's up for grabs. And it is intercepted. Picked off by Rob Pate. Second week in as many that Rob Pate has picked off the pass. Vern, I was just about to say this is exactly the kind of start Alabama needed in a game like this. A good first drive until that play, and Andrew Zhao simply threw this one up for grabs. He's trying to go to the new big play receiver. That's Antonio Carter, and it's good coverage. Two Auburn defenders, and the ball just hung up in the air too long, and Peyton was there for the interception. Peyton had a big interception in the win last week against Georgia. Another one here today. Ben Laird, the senior quarterback, his back's in the eye after the interception. The handoff goes to Rudy Johnson. Nice start, Auburn. Nice season, Rudy Johnson. Mm. And let's talk a little bit about Ben Laird, the senior from Hartwell, Georgia. Has gone with this team from 3-8 to 5-6 and now to 8-2. And, and told us earlier this week he can't imagine how meaningful this year has been for Ben Laird as a senior. And he hasn't had to make as many plays as he did a year ago because of Rudy Johnson. But I think he's a better quarterback because of their running game this year. Rudy Johnson, the only setback. Three wide receivers split wide right. Here's Johnson. And another fine run by Rudy Johnson. Now let's check it offensively for the Auburn Tigers. You've met Johnson up front. He is being blocked. Four by Kendall Simmons, McGarry, Cole Kubelik gets the 
Starter is a fifth-year senior at center, Mike Basilo and Colin Sears. Rudy Johnson joined by Heath Evans. Ronnie Daniels, Reggie Worthy, the wideouts, and Lorenzo Diamond is the tight end. Two tight end formation for Auburn. This was what they used so successfully last week in the second half against Georgia. Daniels in motion. DeAndre Green is the other wideout. And the handoff for the third play in succession goes to Rudy Johnson. Defensively for Alabama, Monroe, Smith, Daniel, and Jared Johnson is today's version. They're banged up with injuries up front. The linebackers, Victor Ellis in the middle, Darius Gilbert, and Adam Cox. Salim Rashid is not expected to play a lot today because of injury. Here's the secondary, Tony Dixon, hampered, but in the lineup, Spencer, Kef Bailey, the other starting quarterback, along with Milo Lewis. First and 10, Auburn, no score in the game. They slip it to the fullback, and Heath Evans, the junior from West Palm Beach, Florida, gets a couple of yards. Rudy Johnson came in here as a junior college transfer from Butler JC, El Dorado, Kansas, and what a splendid season he has had. And it surpassed what anybody expected. Even the coaches in the spring when he was there, and even this training camp during two days, they didn't know they had such a special player. They said he, they never really skirmished full speed, and so they weren't able to tell. He showed flashes here and there, but when they started playing games, he has made play after play after play for this Tiger offense. Second down and eight. Time call. Called by Auburn. We'll be right back. Down and eight, Auburn. They will go with a double tight end set in this scoreless first quarter. Robert Johnson has come on to join Lorenzo Diamond. DeAndre Green is wide right. Ronnie Daniels split left. Play fake. Lear, good pressure. Got it. Nice play by Jarrett Johnson. Jarrett Johnson is a guy who's had to play all over the place for this injury riddled defensive line. He's going to come from the top of your screen. He stays home on the bootleg. He beats the block by the guard, Mike Pusillo, and gets out there and makes a nice play for the Alabama defense. This guy's played both inside at tackle and outside at end because of injuries. That was a big time play. Loss of 12, third and 20. Time. Nope, not a timeout. He's just audible. They're down to two. Three-man rush for Alabama. Finds his tight end, Diamond. That is near first down yardage at the 45-yard line. Nice patience by Ben Learburn. This is a three-man rush by Alabama. They're trying to drop eight into coverage and play zone. And you can see Ben Learburn knows I've got time. I got five blockers. They're only rushing three. I can let this play develop. And he finds Diamond across the middle of the field. What a huge third down conversion on the road in the rain by Ben Learburn. And for Lorenzo Diamond, only his 10th catch of the season. Not an integral part as a receiver of the pass offense. Backs in the eye on first down. Rudy met and driven down a loss of one. Rudy Johnson. Rudy Johnson. We asked Tom Tuberville earlier this week if there was a turning point for the season. He pointed to this play, fourth and two, on the road at Ole Miss. And they were down 27-21 uh, at the time. And Rudy not only got the first down, got the touchdown. And Auburn went on to win 35-27. And uh, has really taken off from that point, Rudy Johnson in particular. Four games of 150 yards rushing plus this season. Lost two on the last one at second down. He's only been held under 100 in one game. That against Mississippi State. Here's Lear. It sails on him a little bit. And good defensive coverage. The pass incomplete. He's the kind of a back, too, who really gets better as the game goes on in the, in the last four games as the season wears on. Yeah, and again, on a day like this, I mean, you love having a back like Rudy Johnson that you can give it to. You know he's going to protect the football. He's hard to tackle. He's not a speed guy, but he has very quick feet, and that enables him to make a lot of big plays. He's, he's deceivingly fast. 
Third and 12. Blitz. Laird pumps once, goes deep, has a man open, but it is incomplete knockdown by Reggie Miles, number 23. And Ben Laird wishes he had this back because he had exactly what he wanted. The pump fake got his man free. He just underthrew the football. Watch the pump fake is going to freeze Reggie Miles, and then his receiver is open, but the ball is well underthrown. Jarris McIntyre was there, and he had Miles beat, but the ball was clearly underthrown. Damon Duvall is on to punt for Auburn. Antonio Carter awaits the ball in the rain at the 15-yard line. That one off the side of his foot as he got a little pressure, and there is a flag down. Now, this might be running into the kicker. The ball comes to rest at the seven and a half yard line. Aries Monroe did run into the kicker, Vern. The unusual thing was the snap forced Duvall wide. Watch Monroe. The punter had to move to the right to carry the snap, and Monroe simply ran into him. He's got to be aware of that and knows that he can't run into the kicker. Because of the fine end result of the punt, which is down at the eight yard line, the penalty is declined. What? 5.45 to go opening quarter. Raw day in Tuscaloosa. Auburn comes to town for the first time in 99 years. They take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. These two teams for much of the last century played this game in Birmingham. First down and 10. Toss, sweep, Lamont Galloway. Gets one to the nine yard line. You know, Vern, after that last interception by Andrew Zhao, I wouldn't be surprised if Mike DuBose and Charlie Stubbs and Neil Calloway say, hey, we're going to try to stay in the I formation and see if we can run the football out of there. There's Neil Calloway, the near guy in the frame there with the glasses. Charlie Stubbs right behind him with the ball cap. Charlie Stubbs is the official play caller. Neil Calloway, the official offensive coordinator, but they both share both duties, I think, the way it plays out. They will stay in the eye on second down and eight. The handoff, Galloway, met at the line of scrimmage. That's uh, Brandon Myrie, number 42, instead of Amon Galloway. 42 comes in. Well, the last time these two teams played in Tuscaloosa, November 15th in 1901. Auburn won at 17 nothing. Auburn quarterback Matt Sloan scored two TDs and kicked two PATs. The touchdowns in that time were only worth five points. The contract to play that game was signed six days before the game. Then they played in 1907 and got into a dispute, and the series was suspended for a total of 41 years. Zao. It'll be fourth down. Good coverage downfield, uh, playing a zone defense behind it. And Andrew Zhao, maybe a little gun shy after that last interception, a little hesitant to pull the trigger on that one. That's going to bring on Lane Bearden. And uh, excellent field position, one would think, awaits the Tigers of Auburn. Wet day, though. They've got to field the punt cleanly, though, Vern. Clifton Robinson waits for it at the 45 yard line. Return is on. Nice punt out of the end zone by Bearden. Fair catch is called and taken by Robinson at the 48-yard line. 40-yard punt, nothing on the return. Notre Dame and Rutgers having at each other this afternoon. Here's Timmy V with an update. All right, Vern. Joey Gatherall will take this one in from New Jersey's own Matt Lovecki. Tim, if Alabama scores today, it will be the first time they've scored against Auburn in Tuscaloosa. That's right. The only two previous games, 1893 and 1901, Auburn won big. 
There's Rudy Johnson surging left, but not very far. He gets inside the 45. Tackle made by Darius Gilbert, and we go to the Exxon playbook. Well, this week, we're going to take a look at a play that was a real effective change that Auburn made at halftime last week against Georgia. They went to a two tight end offense to balance the Bulldog defense and then gave it to 32. Rudy Johnson only had 23 yards in the first half of that ball game, but the first play of the third quarter followed a great block by Hart McGarry and went 54 yards to really set the tone of Auburn's comeback in the second half and their big win at home last week. Changed by Ben Laird, second down and five. Four-man rush, the pump goes right side for Ronnie Daniels. That's up in the air and knocked away, incomplete. Tony Dixon got over and Kev Bailey was also there. But for a moment as though Dixon was going to grab the interception. Well, Ben Laird was lucky on this one because the pump fake didn't fool anybody this time. The last time they went to the pump fake, it fooled the defense. He underthrew it. This time, two defenders in the area, and Dixon just not able to come down with the football. But Dixon is a big guy to have back for Ellis Johnson's defense, particularly in the run support. He's been banged up a little bit, a key player for this defense. Third and five, scoreless first quarter. Hand off Heath Evans. Nice play. He rumbles to the 20. Down at the 10. Victor Ellis caught him from behind. Huge play, Auburn. A huge audible by Ben Leard. He saw the three-man rush again, and he moved his back over and then audible to the run. Nice job. You see three defensive linemen, five blockers. Nice block in there by Mike Pasillo, the guard. And a real effective read by Ben Leard getting the football on the run against the three-man rush. Five blockers up front, three defensive linemen, and a big third down play. Gain of 33 by far the longest one this season for Heath Evans, the junior. First and goal at the nine. Rudy Johnson plunges to the five. Victor Ellis wraps him up at that spot. Rudy Johnson, Rudy Ellis on the play. Second and goal inside the red zone this season. 24 touchdowns, five field goals on 36 trips. And on the other side, Alabama's red zone defense. Prior to the Tennessee game, they had held opponents from scoring nine out of 19 opportunities. But since then, 20 out of 21 times, their opponents have scored. Two tight ends set on second down from the five. Laird to the fullback, Evans, down to the two and a half. They might spot this just inside the three. Victor Ellis, Tony Dickens, the tackle. Not a bad idea there by Auburn and Noel Mazzone with, with a guy like Rudy. You know he's going to gather all the attention. Everybody's going to be watching Rudy Johnson, and a nice idea to try to slip the fullback in there on a quick hitter. Brandon Johnson, number 45, comes in as an extra blocking back now. So you got the power formation on third down with Rudy Johnson behind Brandon Johnson and Heath Evans wing left. Go play. Nothing doing. Nice job. Nice penetration by Kenny Smith. He, he doesn't get the tackle, but watch 88 get into the backfield and force Rudy to cut back in. And then when he cut in, it was nothing but crimson jerseys there. Real nice play by the senior, the leader in there on the defense, Kenny Smith. Galvis White also a part of it, and so Damon Duvall will attempt his 14th field goal of the season, this from 22 yards away. for Duvall, Auburn strikes first. And it was set up by a season-long run from the junior fullback, Heath Evans of 33 yards. Late first quarter from Tuscaloosa, Tigers by three. 
a surprise the Auburn Tigers going for the ground game. No, I mean, that's their bread and butter. Rudy Johnson is their marquee player, and everything kind of goes off of that. Ben Lear does a lot of play action off of the bootleg and stuff like that, but it all starts with Rudy Johnson running the football, and this is the perfect weather for a guy like Rudy Johnson. 3 nothing as we get underway with the second quarter. Andrew Zhao through the ill-timed pass that was intercepted by Rob Pate. Watch the screen right out here to Millens. Try to get him involved in the game early. Stack three wideouts to the left and one to the right. Here's Zhao. He's being chased, and he is down at the 21. Some, somewhere a miscommunication burned because Zhao raised up to throw the screen, and there was nobody to throw the football to. All three receivers went downfield blocking, and Zhao nowhere to go with the football. Watch him. He's ready to throw right now, but there's nobody looking for the football. So he does the smart thing, try to run behind those guys blocking, but obviously a miscommunication. And uh, again, a little frustrating, I'm sure, coming off the sideline after the timeout and not getting the first play right. Quick snap and the roll to the right. Fires it out. He's got it for Freddie Millens. And Millens with the catch out of bounds at 31. That's uh, close for the first down in front of Larry Casher. Well, Freddie Millen's preseason publicity as a Heisman hopeful. Opening game against UCLA, returned to punt 71 yards, and things yeah. went south quickly. Well, he had an injury early on in the year, about midway point, didn't play in the Ole Miss game, had a knee injury, and and he, he just has not had the same kind of season. He still has that kind of ability, and Antonio Carter has kind of become the go-to guy, but, but these are two guys, both of them, can still make some big plays if you get them the football in the right kind of places. First down. NFL coverage continues tomorrow on CBS at 1 o'clock. It's regional coverage. Many of you will see Oakland at New Orleans in the first game. And in uh, the second, the Jets make their visit down to Miami. It all begins, of course, with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern time tomorrow on CBS. Vern, we talked about how this was going to be a physical game and which team could establish themselves physically. Well, so far, Alabama has run the football eight times and have only gained three yards. So not a great start in establishing the ground game for the Crimson Tide. Here's the handoff to Galloway, and he gets out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Galloway, the leading rusher for this team, and then the last four games, it's really fallen off. Yeah, it's really hurt them. Now, they've turned the ball over 13 times in those last four games as well, but running the football, even going into last week, they were still leading the SEC, but really got throttled by Mississippi State, and there you see the comparison on this wet day here today in Tuscaloosa. Second and nine. Play fake. Fake the reverse. Zhao has it. Throws it to the alternate receiver on the right side. That's Galloway out of the backfield. He looked deep, but Auburn had uh, sniffed this one out from the get-go. Excellent coverage downfield by Auburn. Alabama had three receivers released on this pattern, and all three were covered extremely well by the Tigers. Take a look. You're going to have this receiver, this receiver, and then the back coming out, and all three guys are picked up well by the Auburn Tigers. Nowhere to go with the football, and Andrews out just has to take a shot at it and throw it away. Third and nine from the spread with Millen's right and Collins left. Stunts by the Auburn defense. Zhao fires it out. It's complete. Nope, incomplete. Collins could not hang on as uh, Rodney Creighton, number 10, was defending. Tough catch to make like that on a day like this. The ball a little thrown outside, and Collins tried to get back out and make the catch. Just not able to corral it. Your tendency on a day like this to use your body a little more than you normally would to catch the football, and that time Collins not able to make the catch. That brings on Lane Bearden. Clifton Robinson awaits the punt at the 30-yard line. Snap just a little high, but uh, a nice high punt. Robinson will let it bounce, and it takes an Alabama roll toward the 20-yard line. I think he lost the ball. I don't think Clifton Robinson found the football. The ball hit, and he was looking around trying to follow the sound. 
Raindrops kept falling on his head. And Lane Bearden trying to get downfield. Whoops. In the rain in Tuscaloosa, 3-0 Auburn. They have a first down at their own 21-yard line. Backs in the eye on first and 10. Give it to Rudy Johnson, who's met at the line of scrimmage and gang tackled. Led by David Daniel, number 57. Well, we've talked a lot about this rivalry. Let's get more from Jill Arrington. One of the most incredible games of this rivalry was on December 2nd, 1972. Coach Bryant's Crimson Tide was ranked second, going up against ninth-ranked Auburn. For the entire game, Alabama defense held Auburn's offense until the fourth quarter with 5 minutes, 30 seconds left. Alabama was leading 16-3. Auburn's Bill Newton blocked two Alabama punts, and David Langer ran both in for touchdowns. Auburn came back to win 17-16, now known as the famous Punt Bama Punt game. Mer. All right, Jill, thank you. On second down, quick flip over the head of Jarris McIntyre, the intended receiver. Sidelight to that Punt Bama Punt game. That was the first game as a player for Mike DePose, the head coach now at Alabama in his final game, wearing a number made famous by Leroy Jordan, who was in attendance today. Mike DePose told us yesterday, Todd, that this is the one game he never enjoyed playing in. Yeah, he said because for one reason, the game never ends. I mean, they talk about it and they play it 365 days a year and, and hurt the enjoyment of it. Another audible play clock at five. Four man Crimson Tide rush leered up. Safety valve, Rudy Johnson met and caught. Milo Lewis, it'll be fourth down here. What about Notre Dame? Let's check in with Tim Brando. Vern, last week, Nick Seta ran for a touchdown against Boston College. The all right, Tim, 3-0 here. The snap is back, and the punt from Duvall is underway. Taken by Antonio Carter. Good downfield coverage by the Tigers. He stopped at the 45-yard line. Rashad Walker, number 37, led the way. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College football. We'll continue after this word from your local station. on CBS. Did this U.S. Navy Admiral kill civilians in Vietnam? Prepare yourself for the truth. This is the JAG you can't miss. It's an all-new JAG Tuesday on CBS. Best Alabama starting position of the afternoon. First down at their own 45. Galloway drives to cut inside, and he is met and driven down at the 45-yard line. CBSSportsLine.com play Aflac trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Now, Vern, I talked about the first five minutes of this game and who would set the tempo physically. I think Auburn did a better job of that. Alabama still struggling to, to get anything going running the football. However, after the Alabama defense held Auburn to the field goal and didn't give up the touchdown, they did play a lot better on their last defensive series. But the onus still right now, I think, on the offensive line of Alabama. Second and 11, the stack. Here comes the ball drilled up to Dre Fulgham, number three, and Larry Casher, one of the 15 Auburn seniors from Pritchard, Alabama, was there to knock it away. It'll be third and 11. All right. This is your moment you wait for each week. I know it's time now for the Aflac. trivia question. In 81, Bear Bryant surpassed Amos Alonzo Stagg with 315 victories to become the winningest coach in college football. What team did Bryant beat to break the record? Aflac. <laughs> this is a rather weak Aflac trivia question, I think. I just want to go on record as saying that. Third and 11. The pump, Sal. He's got it into the hands of Antonio Carter. Fumble. Recovered by. Pass. 
Paul Hogan, number 74, the center. They tried to run the wide receiver screen. This is one of the favorite plays that Alabama likes to use with their wide receivers. It was not there initially. Zhao had to kind of double clutch it to get it to the receiver. Watch right here. Here's Carter running the screen. It's not open initially. He keeps with the pattern, and then, again, a cold football. It's cold, it's wet, it's slippery. You really have to protect the football, and it's knocked out by Alex Lincoln. Fourth and a foot at the 45. He's trying to get the draw him off sides here. There's the head cock. Good concentration. Yes, indeed. It certainly was. On the road, you're a lot of hype, a lot of emotion in the game. Nice job by the Auburn defense hanging in there and not buying the fake. So Andrew Zow is trying to use his voice. He's bobbing his head. He actually made a hand signal to one of the wide receivers. Nothing worked against the Auburn defense. Good concentration. Lane Bearden not a punt on fourth down off the side of his foot. Well, all's well that ends well. 25-yard punt, but the same as a touchback, I guess. Trying to put a positive spin on that. Dr. Roger Maxfield. And thank you. 3-0 here, 9-13 to go before the halftime break. And the Auburn Tigers picked fourth by most of the prognosticators. That's in the Western Division. And here they are, 8-2, with a chance to go to the SEC Championship game. They have to win here and get a little help. Leard out of the spread. Rudy Johnson slips a tackle, bounces to the outside, and picks up pick six yards. Rudy Johnson across the 25-yard line. Milo Lewis with the tackle. Now what's at stake now for Auburn? They come in with a 5-2 division record. Mississippi State, with victories in its final two games, wins the tiebreaker. So uh, in a three-way tie, Mississippi State advances. If Auburn and LSU are tied, Auburn wins, and you see the various permutations of it all. It, uh, they're going to play it out on the field. But a lot of things can happen. Second down and three. Up the middle, Johnson stopped at the 29-yard line. That'll be short of the first down. There is a flag. Rudy Johnson out of Ettrick. Virginia. Offsides, defense, five yard penalty. Missouri on the first down. Noah Mazzone, the offensive coordinator, went to scout another player at mm -hmm. Butler JC. He actually went to scout Daniel Cobb, the quarterback. And while there, watch Rudy Johnson play and uh, they all admit they had no idea yeah. what they had. Yeah, at least Noel was honest. We you know we asked him did you expect him to be this good? He says no. We thought he might be a fullback. We, we didn't know if he was fast enough to play in the SEC. Thought he might be too heavy. But he has been a great great player in the SEC. First down and ten after the penalty. Didn't get it off. No. That'll cost him five. Now, that's something as a senior quarterback, Ben Lear really needs to avoid. I mean, uh, those are the kind of penalties that just really knock you back. First down, you got a little momentum. You've gotten out from the 20-yard line. Now you put yourself in a first and 15. Three-man split. Here's the handoff to Johnson. Carries tacklers out near the 35-yard line. And he picks up eight. Rudy Johnson. You know, Vern, this is a this is a typical picture of what Rudy Johnson does. Just just watch this guy break tackles. It's not a flashy run. There's Victor Ellis, unblocked, makes him miss. 
There's a defensive tackle, Jarrett Johnson, that can't bring him down. Finally, about six yards later and four defenders later, he's on the ground. And that, that's, that's what he does. He breaks tackles and he gains yards after he's hit the first time. 26 of 32 today. There's a tackle made and Rudy Johnson is dropped by Kenny Smith, number 88. Vern, Kenny Smith is playing real well. I mean, he, he is playing good today, and, and this is a guy, a senior out of Meridian, Mississippi, that, that has to carry the load inside for Alabama. This is a position, the defensive line coming into the season was a real strength for Alabama, but an injury to Kendall Moorhead before the season started, an injury to Kenny King midway through the season has depleted this troop. And Kenny Smith is the kind of the lone survivor in there, and he is off to a fast start in this ballgame. Third and eight. Alabama with a blitz look. They bring five. Lear, good protection. That one's almost tipped off. Tip and intercepted. No. Fourth down. Kelf Bailey with a nice job on the outside. That ball hung in the air a long time. Thrown from the right hash all the way to the left sideline. Trying to get it to Marcel Willis, and this ball is in the air a long time, and Bailey able to cut in front of it and make the play. Kelf Bailey. Senior cornerback. Duvall on the punt. Antonio Carter awaits it. This is a fine punt. Drives Carter back to the 15-yard line. Avoids the first downfield contact and uh, counterpunches it out to the 25. Six minutes remaining, first half. Low-scoring game. Auburn by three. Auburn leading 3-0 before a sold-out crowd at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Last time these two teams played here, they played in the quad, the quadrangle, on campus. So this is the first time Auburn has played in this facility. There's the handoff to Galloway. Out to the 30. And this, as we have told you, is the final game in the coaching career at Alabama for Alabama grad Mike DuBose, 47 years of age. Won his first four games in his first year as head coach, but they went one and six in the last seven. In 98, they beat Auburn last year. Surprised a lot of folks by winning the SEC championship. But this year, ranked third in the country in preseason and really mm -hmm. never got over the loss to UCLA. No, we talked to the players yesterday. They're still talking about the UCLA game, that that's where their season went south. Handoff goes to McClintock for a yard across the 30 to the 31. Mike DeBose said uh, there's a part of him that is anxious for Sunday to come when he is he's already cleaned out his office this has been as one might imagine a very emotional week for Mike DeBose he does love this university yeah. that's obvious and everything he's said and done he and his wife Polly and the kids both of whom are students here Julie and Michael Jr. will uh, head to his hometown of Op, Alabama where they will spend the Thanksgiving holidays with his mom and dad very poignant afternoon though for all the coaching staff at Alabama on third down Sal pressure flips it left Galloway at the 31 yard line it'll be fourth down Mark Brown number 52 with the tackle so yet again Alabama can't move it Good coverage downfield. You see Mike DeBose, and, and what he's most upset with right now, I think, is the offensive line and saying, look, we have got to be able to run the football on these guys. We run first down and second down and don't gain an inch. We can't beat this team if we can't run the football. Nearing the four-minute mark, Lane Bearden on to punt. Robinson moves up, lets it bounce. And it takes an Auburn hop out of bounds in front of the Alabama bench. All right, I know you've been waiting. The answer to the Affleck. trivia question. What team did Bryant beat to break the record? Auburn won it at Legion Field, 1981, 28-17. You were there, weren't you? I was there. Got to work that game with one of my idols in the business, Keith Jackson and Frank Royals and have a picture on my office wall of me trying to convince Coach Bryant that he ought to do a halftime interview. <laughs> First down. So I have a certain respect for what Jill Arrington accomplishes each week. 
It is. The tackle that Rudy Johnson made at the 42 by Darius Gilbert, number 99. I'll tell you one thing that's apparent to me, and, and that is that the defense of Alabama has picked it up a notch. Ever since they held Auburn to a field goal earlier in the first quarter, they have really picked it up a notch. They are playing with a lot more passion right now than the Alabama offense is. That's, that's for sure. Marcel Willis breaks and goes wide right. I think Ben Lear is going to have to make a throw. He's going to have to make a play down the field here and loosen up this Alabama defense a little bit. Across the middle, wide open, DeAndre Green. Slipped under the coverage, and that's a first down at the Alabama 41-yard line. 18-yard gain. A little bit of a delay route by DeAndre Green. They ran off the coverage with a couple other receivers and then slipped the big receiver, DeAndre Green, underneath, and he had a lot of green field in front of him. And a, and a play that Auburn needed. Alabama starting to squeeze down on the running game a little bit, run them off, and get a play throwing the football down the middle of the field. After the 18-yard gain, first and 10, high formation. Johnson with Heath Evans leading the way. Bobs to the outside. Milo Lewis with the tackle. Early on, Auburn came out, had some success running the football, and then the Alabama defense has started to pick it up a notch. They're starting to attack the line of scrimmage, and they're really been led by Kenny Smith. He's kind of set the tempo for the defense, and they've done a much better job here later in the first half in containing Rudy Johnson and the Auburn offense. The only score in this game, a 22-yard field goal by Duvall set up after a 33-yard run from Evans. Now Johnson in a wing to the left side on second down. Leared back. He can run or pass, and he fires wow. out. Dangerous. It sure was. Woo. Robinson. I mean, he runs. He's loose. I don't know if this was a design throwback by Ben Leard or if he just thought he'd take a shot at it, but that is dangerous throwing it back across the field. And if Salim Rashid, who was in on that play, doesn't have a bum ankle, he might make that a huge play for Alabama. Third and one in a 3 nothing game with 1.50 to go before the break. They toss it to Johnson. The initial contact not good enough. There again, yeah. yards after contact. Not a flashy run, not a big gaining run, but a very important run. Alabama showing blitz inside. Good call by Noel Mazzone, tossing it to the outside, and then he just steps over a couple tacklers. He breaks arm tackles, and he keeps moving forward. Not a huge gain, but a significant run by Rudy Johnson. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman on the AXA halftime report. First down. Johnson now with 46 yards. Leard will go from the spread. Blitz coming. They're sending five. They hit him as he lets it go. Kenny Smith again. Yep. They tried to go hitch and go to Ronnie Daniels, and they just didn't have time because of Kenny Smith. And here's Kenny Smith right here, 88. Watch the pressure. Nice job. Goes right around Hart McGarry and does not enable Ben Leard to go with the hitch and go. We talked with Kenny Smith yesterday, and uh, he, you knew he was, he's got a lot of pride. He was excited to play in this game, and he is having an outstanding first half. Second and ten. Slipped the ball to Johnson. Good recognition by Alabama, so that'll bring up third down. We near the one-minute mark. Auburn with two timeouts remaining. They burn one of them now to stop the clock. Third and six. Tommy Tuberville's team has one timeout remaining. Fans in this state await this game all year long. A little rain, a little cold will not hinder them from their enjoyment of same. Three nothing, third and six. Keep an eye on Clifton Robinson. Side, number 15 starts in motion 
Laird looks his direction, is hit as he lets it go in, complete fourth down. Van Laird only four of 11 now throwing the ball. Jared Johnson got to him. He wanted to go to Clifton Robinson, but again, good pressure by the Alabama defense. Both ends, Jarrett Johnson coming from the left and Antoine Odom right here, number 98. Both of them got in there and didn't allow Ben Leard to get the throw off. That's some frustration by the Auburn offensive coaches knowing they didn't protect Ben Leard that time. Damon Duvall has knocked one home from 22 in the rain before the half. This from 42. And he hit it perfectly. Double the score. Auburn up by six with 47 seconds remaining. First half of play. I think they see themselves on the giant scoreboard. And they're trying to keep warm before the halftime presentation. The ball with the kickoff. He's hit two field goals today. This one taken by McCadley at the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line by Damon Duvall. Well, we'll invite you to rejoin our coverage of the Franklin Templeton Shark Shootout tomorrow from South Florida. After the second round, Franco and Hoke have a two-shot lead over the team of McCarran Faxon, DeMarco and Brown at 12 under. We ask you to be with us for the Franklin Templeton shootout tomorrow. Four o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Eastern. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Good field position. Alabama has a chance to, to try to put something together here before the end of the half. They have two timeouts left. Zal left side for Antonio Carter. The grab is made, but he only picked up a yard. Not and, good. Uh, nope. That one might have been better off incomplete. And they got a waste of timeout just because the ball was thrown too low and Carter couldn't get out of bounds. And so they have to waste a timeout with 23 seconds left. Samsung joyfully introduces the world. Six nothing with 23 seconds to go before halftime. Auburn up. Alabama unable to run the ball effectively. Yeah, they can't sustain anything. They've only gained 13 yards rushing on 12 carries, and that's why you see this right here. Punt, punt, punt. This is punt, Bama, punt all over again, just in a different way, I guess. Second down and nine. And here comes Andrew Zell in the Crimson Tide. And Andrew needs to be very smart here. I mean, certainly you'd like to get something on the scoreboard, but don't force it and make a critical mistake at this point in the game. Auburn rushes three, drops eight, deep left side. McCray's down there. The catch is made out of bounds. It was Creighton who was defending McCadley. Tell you what, this has been an excellent first half defensively for the Auburn Tigers. They have covered everything in the passing game. You see Creighton's eyes right on the quarterback. He's got McCadley pinned on the sidelines. You cannot play cornerback any better than that. You know where the football is, and you just continue to force that receiver out to the sideline where he has no room. Derek Woods breaks wide right on third down and nine. Low snap, handoff. They tried to get it out of the backfield to Armand Galloway, and this crowd responds in a lusty fashion. Well, Vern, that had a chance to be a big play. It's just Javor Mills just wanted it more. I mean, that, that play was open, and Mills just beat the block and made the play. Take a look at the end of this play now. Here's Mills. He just cuts right inside the block and makes the play. There's a lot of running room there if they make that block on Mills. Mike DeBose, one half of coaching left at Alabama. In the meantime, Jill Arrington is with Tommy Tuberville. Coach Tuberville, it is a mess out here. Alabama's defense is holding strong. What are you going to do to get your running game going in the second half? Well, what we're going to do is start throwing the ball a little bit on first down. We've We've tried to create a running game, but they're putting seven or eight people up to stop Rudy. So we're if we're going to move the ball on offense in the second half, we've got to start spreading the field and throwing it. All right, Coach, good All luck. Right, 
All right, Jill, thank you. 6 nothing as we head to the halftime break. 6 nothing Auburn. And now let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, coming up. Alabama. We get set for the start of the third quarter. Auburn leads Alabama and Mike DeBose 6 nothing moments ago. Jill Arrington had a chance to talk with the Alabama coach. Coach DeBose, your defense is playing tough. Still no points on the board. What'd you tell your offense to come out and do the second half? We got to line up and block somebody one on one. And their defensive line's whipping our offense line at the line of scrimmage. We're not going to win unless we can make some first downs and put football in the end zone. This is a big rivalry. It was your last halftime speech. What'd you say to your players? Well, again, we just got to go out and play. The team that's won this game the last several years was behind at halftime. We had some guys last year at the second half took it over. Waiting to see who will take it over here. All right, back to you guys. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Coach. All right, Jill, thank you. Third and fourth quarter underway from Tuscaloosa this series suspended after they played each other in 1907 suspended for 41 years and the dispute centered on what Auburn folks perceived as the use of an illegal formation by Alabama in a 1906 game and the other dispute had to do with per diem <laughs> Alabama wanted to pay the Auburn players all 22 of them two bucks a person to come to Birmingham and play the Auburn players wanted 350 each and for the lack of 33 bucks they suspended play in all sports for 41 years kickoff taken at the three big return all the way out to the 43 yard line Roderick Hood, number 36, counter punches it 40 yards. And we get set for the start of the third quarter. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge trying to keep warm. <laughs> it is cold and it's still wet. And I think, as Tommy Tuberville said, going off the field at the end of the first half, they've got to throw the football a little bit more. Ben Lear needs to open up the offense a little bit. Ronnie Daniels and Marcel Willis, their top two receivers, zero catches in that first half. Keep an eye on them here in the third quarter. Rudy Johnson, the lone setback, they hand it to Johnson. And he works again, dragging tacklers with him as he gets out to midfield. Darius Gilbert, number 99, with Jared Johnson. And at halftime, it broke down statistically thusly. Rushing yards, 78 to 12. And third down conversions, one of six for Alabama in that first half. And Mike DuBose is right. I mean, they've got to block people better up front. They've got to run the football. Auburn needs to throw the football a little bit better here in the second half. Second down and three. Quick flip. Left side. Great play. Great play by Milo Lewis. Quick read, quick reaction, and an excellent tackle in the open field. Take a look at Milo Lewis now. He reads it. His eyes are on the quarterback. He slips inside the block of Ronnie Daniels and then makes the sure tackle in the open field. Great quick reaction by Milo Lewis, and then he finishes the job with the tackle. Third and six. Robinson is slot to the right side. Lear gets it, delivers it left side to DeAndre Green out to the 43-yard line. That will be enough to move the chain for Auburn. Gain of 10. Nice protection up front that time. Alabama chose to come with a little more pressure. They brought five men, and all five guys picked up by Auburn, and it allowed Lear to stay in there and make the nice throw on the out route. There's the reference that Mike DeBose made in his conversation with Jill. The team that has led at the half the last three years has wound up losing the game, first and ten. Overall, that's not been the case in the series. 71% of the time, the team that's leading has won. This time, there are no yards after contact for Rudy Johnson. Jared Johnson, number 96, was there. Rudy Johnson, with this splendid season, only one game under 100 yards, announced as a semifinalist for the Doak Walker Award. That uh, announcement will be made in December. Nine 100-yard rushing efforts this year. 
surpassing the previous record held by Bo Jackson. Second and nine. Cleared the time, right side, receiver slips the tackle. Willis to the 35-yard line, caught short of the first down by Marcus Spencer. Now that Doak Walker list, the eighth finalist semifinalist announced just recently includes Alexander Anderson, Sanford, Simonton, Anthony Thomas, Ladanian Tomlinson of TCU, and Whitaker from San Jose State. So, Pretty good list right there. Yeah, honoring the late Doak Walker who passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, who, much to my enjoyment in life, became a dear friend before his untimely passing. Third and one. Play fake. Nice. Yes, it was. Lorenzo Diamond. Auburn moves. Diamond at the 21, a gain of 12. Third and one, everybody in the stadium thinking Rudy Johnson. Watch the defense respect Rudy Johnson. They all think run, the little play action fake frees up the tight end very easily for a nice throw by Ben Lear. You've got to respect Rudy Johnson and that bootleg fake all they needed for the first down. Johnson the only setback, three wide outs, split left. Johnson. Nifty move. And goal, Tigers. You know, Vern, I read an interesting quote by Rudy this week. He said, I've never been a speed guy, but I've never worried about it because I think if you have quick feet, you don't have to be exceptionally fast. And watch how quick his feet are in the hole. Just able to move and cut and shift and break tackles. He's powerful, yes, but he also has very quick feet, and he's able to dance around and find space in the defense. That a gain of 17. He's got 75 in the rain for the afternoon. 64% of his yards after contact today. First and goal with a 6-0 lead. Single coverage out here outside. Flag is down on the near side of the field. I think it might be offsides. Alabama lined up offsides. That flag was dropped immediately when the ball was snapped. It might even have been Marcus Spencer, who was lined up across from DeAndre offsides Green. Offsides on the defense, half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Now you recall that one of the Heisman Trophy winners for the Auburn Tigers, Bo Jackson in 1985. Look at the relative comparison of the kinds of seasons each had. Jackson winning the Heisman 15 years ago. And Rudy Johnson, I saw one columnist here in Alabama who said he knew Rudy wouldn't win this year, but he would get his vote. Johnson, not this time. Salim Rashid, number 11. Ellis Johnson pulling out all the stops right now with Salim Rashid. He told us he hasn't practiced all week. He's got a bad ankle. You're going to see him on the top of your screen, number 11, flash in right there and make the play and get help from Kenny Smith. But Salim Rashid, a bad ankle, limited all week, and Ellis is saying, hey, we need him. He's our best linebacker. Healthy or not, he's got to play for us. Second and goal. Laird to the audible. Johnson creeps right. Quick setup. Fade batter into the end zone. Intercepted. Yes, it is. Milo Lewis, another big play. He's had a couple on this drive. He played it perfectly. What a huge defensive stop for the Crimson Tide. Trying to go to Ronnie Dan. And watch Milo Lewis. His eyes are on the quarterback. He knows when the ball is let go, and then he times his jump. Almost knocked away by his own guy, Dixon, but Milo Lewis able to make the catch, and Mike Dubow says just what we needed from our defense. Turnovers even at one and one. That is the fourth interception 
for the season for Milo Lewis, and it complements seven tackles he's had today. And Vern, both interceptions by Ben Leard have been the result of underthrowing the football, not giving his receiver enough of a chance. Alabama calls timeout. They've got the ball back, 9.38 to go, third quarter. Nine thirty-eight to go after the interception in the third quarter. Zal with a handoff to Galloway, splits into the secondary, moves it out to the twenty-seven-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the Milo Lewis interception, Todd. Well, first of all, it was single coverage, and Milo Lewis read it, and the ball was underthrown. Now I said that Leard had thrown two interceptions. The first half play was not an interception, but it was underthrown, and at the end of that. Tommy Tuberville very upset with offensive coordinator Noel Mazzone probably for throwing the football wet day Rudy's got him on their heels a little bit give it to 32 don't throw it right there second down and four Galloway doesn't get much as he tests left guard now we'll continue with our coverage of college football Thanksgiving weekend on Friday regional coverage some of you will see LSU Arkansas others will watch West Virginia Pittsburgh that's Friday at 2 30 and then Saturday Georgia Tech against Georgia and Boston College moves into the Orange Bowl to take on Miami that is our college football lineup next weekend it is raw in <laughs> yes. Tuscaloosa Millens who lined up at quarterback and you think Auburn hadn't been studying some game film. You're right. John Lovett, defensive coordinator. Uh, th this Auburn defense has been in the right place at the right time all day today. And he told us when we talked to him on the phone earlier in the week, we've got to know where number 15 and number two are all the time. And that time, they were not fooled at all by Millens taking the snap. He's under center. They force him to go the other way, and then they pursue and chase him down. Nice job by Larry Kasher making the tackle. And as a result, fourth down. Lane Bearden on the punt. Fair catch taken by Robinson. Grabs it at the 37 yard line. They're going to call halo violation. There were two guys down there. Shantu Ray was being blocked, I believe, by. Rashad Walker. Uh, here's the call. Of holding against the receiving team. The penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. Be 10 yards further back, be first down. Yeah, good job. Good call. There was the hold. It was Herschel Bolden that was down there. And the hold was on Rashad Walker. So back up the Tigers a little further. Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by MVP.com. Blockbuster. First Union. And by the United States Army. 7.38 to go in the third. Auburn, its first visit ever to Bryant-Denny Stadium. This rivalry was played on a supposedly neutral field, Legion Field, in Birmingham from 1948 until 1989 when a game was actually played at Auburn. It's first down and 10. Play fake, Lear. Runner pass, lobs it out, intercepted. What a bad pass. Picked off by Connie Brown. Last two throws Ben Leard has made, they both were poorly thrown. This one looked like it really got away from him and sailed on him. Didn't have any zip on the ball. They're trying to go play action and throw on first down. Not a bad decision, but watch the ball just take off on him. Really sailed over the head of his tight end, Johnson, and Connie Brown there to pick it off. Pressure by Antoine Odom, maybe forced that bad throw, and Alabama in great position. First interception for Connie Brown. 
Ball at the 40. Sam Collins in motion. They'll give it to Galloway. Meets resist fumbles. Uh, fumbles the ball. Vern, you can't emphasize enough. The longer this game goes and the wetter and colder it gets, the harder that ball is to hold on to. When the game started, the balls were pretty dry and they're able to keep them dry, but you really have to concentrate and focus on securing the football. Watch the end of this play. He's got it right there. Good. It's ripped out by DeMarco McNeil. And Alabama very fortunate that they got that football back. There's McNeil, 92, gets the arm in there. Second down and 10. In trouble. Javor Mills, number 96, with the sack. Mills was there, and DeMarco McNeil also. He made the play on the strip. Watch him again now. Here's McNeil. Here's Mills. Both of them are going to get quick pressure. And the right side of the Alabama offensive line, a little collapse on that play. Loss of 10, third and 20. Brandon Myrie laid out of the huddle, heads to the sideline. And Triandos Luke, number 84, takes his spot. Lines up in a slot to the left. Here's Zhao with time across the middle, crossing pattern. Triandos Luke, who came on for that play, could not hang on. You can't fault Andrews out. This ball was thrown well. It was not going to be enough for the first down, but maybe enough to try a field goal, a long field goal, well thrown, and Luke just not able to make the catch. Lane Bearden on again. Robinson at the 10 for Auburn. Fair catch, taken at the 11-yard line. That's a 37-yard punt. Auburn pinned deep. They lead by six. What kind of a company are we? We're a All right, guys, on the sideline, Marty Lyons, one of the greats here at Alabama. Had a marvelous professional career. First down at the 11-yard line. Here is the handoff to Rudy Johnson. Two yards, nothing more. And let's go right down to the field and check in with Jill Arrington. The Auburn-Alabama rivalry reached new heights in the 1980s. The average margin of victory was only 6.4 points. Some classic battles were fought with Auburn star Bo Jackson. In 1985, it was considered one of the best fourth quarters ever. The lead changed hands four times. But on a 52-yard field goal by Van Tiffen as the clock expired, Alabama won the game 25-23. All right, thank you, Jill. Van Tiffen is also present today as Alabama honors many of its own. Here's the handoff to Johnson. Stuffed. Kenny Smith, he's leading the charge. I mean, you talk about you want leadership out of a senior on and off the field. Kenny Smith is giving it right now. Watch the penetration into the backfield and stops the play. Eight tackles today for Kenny Smith. He is leading this Alabama defense. Another huge third down play. They came up with the interception the last drive. Another chance to get the ball in good position for their offense. Marcel Willis breaks wide right. DeAndre Green is split left. Four-man Alabama rush. Leard. Safety valve, Heath Evans breaks a tackle, first down, Auburn. Oh, my. They did everything right defensively except miss the tackle. Marcus Spencer, they forced Ben Leard to dump it off to the back. That's what you want on defense. He couldn't go downfield. He dumps it off, but Marcus Spencer just can't finish the deal right here, and Evans takes it for the first down. Auburn up by six on two Damon DeBall field goals. We've got four minutes remaining third quarter for the day. You see the comparison. Neither quarterback having a, a great afternoon, understandable yeah. in this rain. First and ten. Johnson again. Rudy Johnson, 
Howie mentioned Van Tiffen. You saw Marty Lyons among those honored at halftime. He is back in Alabama. Joe Willie Namath. What an ovation he received. Ken Stabler, who of course does uh, radio broadcast with Eli Gold for Alabama, Newsom, Baumhauer, Stevenson. What a list of names. Leroy Jordan also in. And there is a player down at the 20 yard line. Darius Gilbert, number 99. And while they tend to. Uh, there's Kenny Stabler. Alabama's defensive line, Jared Johnson and Albert Meads, Antoine Odom, and Kenny Smith really getting some good penetration, playing pretty well today. Also looked like he might have gotten good. I wanted to hear Eli Gold. I thought Kenny was going to take it wall to wall. <laughs> you feel like stay, st getting warm and letting them come on down here? <laughs> and Kenny and I are both impressed with what Kenny Smith is doing on the field today for Alabama. Good to see Darius Gilbert walking off under his own power. Uh, Kenny Stabler, one of the all-time great quarterbacks and also one of the great characters I've ever been around. This is Kenny as a quarterback, 65 to 67. Honored at halftime. Loss of two, it's second down and 12. Leard and the Tigers in the rain. Toss sweep left side, Evans with a brush block. Johnson breaks the tackle out to the 30 yard line. Just short of the first down. That was made by Connie Brown, number 36. He's got such an interesting running style, Vern. He doesn't wow you ever, but watch. He just keeps his feet moving. He finds a crease, he finds a hole, gets a good block from Heath Evans. And he just breaks tackles. He, again, it's nothing flashy. It's nothing real uh, that makes you turn your head. But he just keeps going forward and gaining yards. Third and two. Power set again. Brandon Johnson in at the lead block. Johnson goes right. Now let's see where the spot is. This will be very close. There's a good look. Johnson had a little natural grass. I don't think he got it. Well, you can see the expression on Rudy's face. He came up a hair short. Running the toss sweep again, and Milo Lewis was the first guy to make contact. Took a little bit of the steam out of Rudy Johnson, and then Kenny Smith to finish off the play. Damon Duvall, who does both place kicking and punting, is back. Gets rid of this one, but it's uh, end over end. Bounces to the left and will limp to a stop at the 26 yard line. Well, coming up Sunday on 60 Minutes, why didn't the cop know before he shot and killed an African American that the man he killed was also a cop? That's one of the topics to be covered on 60 Minutes Sunday. 142 to go, third quarter. Vern, this is a critical series, I think, for Andrew Zhao and the Alabama offense. They got the turnover and went three plays backwards and had to punt, couldn't capitalize. They must let the defense rest, and they've got to do something positive with the, with the football. Brandon Myrie in. There's a play fake to him. Zhao rolls right. He'll keep it. Good decision. Out of bounds at the 30. The tackle made by Roderick Hood, number 36. Nothing there. He gave it a look and decided to run it and get something out of it. Mentioned that uh, Zhao was involved in the quarterback controversy here. Tyler Watts named the starter after the first couple of games. And Watts went out with an ACL tear in the Ole Miss game. Four plays in. So Zhao has been the quarterback since then. Flips it. Underneath. Almost deflected and picked off. Third and four. 
Well, I watched Andrew Zhao play a lot last year, and I thought he was a fine quarterback. Now, he has not played at all this year like he did last year. I think a lot of it had to do with the, the so-called controversy early in the season. Some of it had to do with their not being sure offensively as an offensive coaching staff whether they wanted to throw the football or run the football. But this is a quarterback that doesn't have anywhere near the confidence level that he played with last season. Out of the spread on third and four. Stunts by the Auburn defense. The pass caught at the 39-yard line. That'll be a first down, Alabama. Nice job by Jason McCadley. Coming back to the football, using his big frame at 6'2 on 200 pounds to shield the defenders away from the football. Andrew Zhao looking at the hook route, and McCadley does a nice job giving a good target to his quarterback and getting a much-needed first down. 1.15 to go, third quarter, clock running. Herschel Bolden comes in, so does Dre Fulgham. And at the last minute, Derek Woods into the huddle. They're not going to get this playoff, Vern. They're, they're down to five seconds. He's going to have to call a timeout. Yep, they do just before the clock expires. Myrie, and somehow, out of that spaghetti, they got five yards. Well, we saw Darius Gilbert limp off a moment ago. Jill, what, uh, what's the story? The story on Darius Gilbert, somehow his helmet hit him in the eye. He says he can see fine, but now he's a little dizzy, so they're holding him out a little bit. I'll keep an eye on him. Back to you guys. All right, Jill. 25 seconds to go, third quarter, second and four. Think about this. Alabama is playing in its 108th season of college football. They're four and seven. In all of those years, only one other Alabama team has ever lost eight games in a year. That's what they're facing here. And that is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down. This was a nice idea and a play call by Charlie Stubbs because what they did was they used the trips receiver as a decoy. Show screen over here and then try to come back to the single receiver. Auburn and thinking the screen was coming and this ball is thrown pretty well and McCadley just can't make the catch. Again, it's wet, it's cold, that ball is hard and slippery and McCadley not able to come down with it. Third down, four at the 45. Darius Gilbert. Zhao looking right, dancing right, comes across into the middle, it's incomplete. Final play of the third quarter. That one Alabama team that lost eight games actually finished 0 and 10 for the year. It was 1955. The coach was Ears Whitworth. Two years later, a guy named Bear Bryant moved in as head coach. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. Six zip. We'll return to Bryant Denny Stadium right after this message and this word from your local station. Want to start a family? Right now? I just got supplemental insurance. Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. We begin the final stanza. Alabama faced with fourth down. Lane Bearden on the punt for the seventh time. This one's short, bouncing at the 26. And Robinson will get out of its way. That's a 30-yard punt for Lane Bearden as we began the final 15. And really difficulty for this Alabama team to move it offensively. Yeah, I mean, 13 yards in the third quarter, 80 for the game. I know it's an ugly day. The weather is bad, but that's not good enough. That's not going to beat anybody. And they struggled last week against Mississippi State, even more so today. And the worst news for them is it's the fourth quarter, which means it's Rudy Johnson time. This is when he wears people down in the fourth quarter. And he is the deep back in the eye on first and ten. There's Johnson. Gouges out another tough three yards. Tackle is made by Kenny Smith, number 88. Obviously, Auburn has a lot more to think about right now than any other game that's going on, but we just got word up here in the press box that Mississippi State and Arkansas tied at 10 going to overtime. Of course, that game a big impact on Auburn and their future in the SEC West. Now, Auburn with a victory has a chance to play in the SEC championship game in Atlanta, but they needed help. There's Jared Johnson mm. whipping off. That's not good. 
He's played well today and again one of the few guys who has stayed healthy on the Alabama defensive line this season. Second down seven. Johnson. Kenny Smith. A couple of friends there to help him. Well, let's go back to New York and check in once again with Jim Brando. All right, fellas, a lot going on. Quarterback Mike McMahon, watch him with the audible here, and he audibles into a 65-yard touchdown run for Dennis Thomas. This just the second play from scrimmage against Notre Dame. That would make it a 24-17 game. Also news out of Arkansas, Mississippi State. Brandon Holmes, a seven-yard touchdown, making it 17 to Arkansas. It's now fourth and goal, Mississippi State, with their turn with the football at the one-yard line. We'll keep you posted. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Auburn leads here 6 0. They've got a big third down. Flag. Play Five clock. yards. Delay. Yep. And that's twice now Ben Leard has gotten caught Game by the play clock. Five yards. Still third down. Third and 11. Here are the current SEC standings Auburn, LSU, Mississippi State with two defeats each. Auburn playing its final regular season game. LSU doesn't play until next week against Arkansas in Little Rock, a game on CBS. Third and 11. Green, wide right. Alabama brings four. They drop seven. Leard has a man open. Lorenzo Diamond. play bigger than that 26 yard game well Adam Cox the linebacker was drifting into the zone keep an eye on 31 here as he drifts back into the zone this ball is going to go right over his fingertips he's not able to get his hand on the ball and it goes right to Lorenzo Diamond Ben Leard with perfect touch on that football and a huge first down for the Tigers Diamond only nine catches for the year has two today Arkansas knocks off Mississippi State Rudy Johnson searches inside the 40 nine yard game Vern just again to put that into perspective with Mississippi State losing if Auburn can hold on and win here and if LSU wins next week then Auburn would advance because they hold the tiebreaker over LSU. They beat them earlier in the season in Auburn. So the stakes in the Iron Bowl just got a little higher for Auburn. Second down, one. Johnson. First down for Rudy Johnson, who creeps closer to another 100-yard afternoon. Boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> in the fourth quarter in a game like this, a guy like this is worth so much. You know you can give it to him. You know he's going to go forward. He's not going to lose yardage. He's not going to put the football on the ground. What a luxury for Tommy Tuberville. And as you see his numbers, he gets stronger as the game goes on. He wears a defense down. Alabama calls timeout. The time comes with 11 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the ball game. She did. Auburn band just concluding its celebration. Their team leading by six. First down and 10 at the 35 36 yard line. Leard play fake. Comes right side for DeAndre Green. Gets great position. Has the catch first and goal. Nice job by Ben Leard seeing eight people in the box here. Okay, you got to throw. You can't run against that. And Kelt Bailey is never going to find the football. Never looks back. And DeAndre Green able to position himself to get on the football. Watch Bailey. He's just looking at Green. Has no idea the ball's in the air or where it's at. And DeAndre Green able to body him up and make the catch. 
First and goal at the five. It's now Rudy time. Play fake. It's not either. Laird fumbles the ball and got a fortuitous bounce back into his hands. Tommy Tuberville is going to go crazy. <laughs> He's going to. They tried to fool him and go play action first down. Well covered by Alabama. And again, the ball is wet. It's slippery. And it just falls right out of the hands of Ben Lear. And he does the right thing of just covering the football and playing second down. Second and goal from the 10. Loss of five. That's a tough play for them because when they're on the five, you can run it a couple times in there. And, and Auburn needs to take a timeout to decide what they want to do. That leaves both teams, Auburn and Alabama, with two timeouts. Scientists announced today the discovery of a new element. The discovery of a new element. They're calling it turbonium. Turbonium. The turbonium is unique. The addition of turbonium to the periodic table of elements was elements. It's electrons traveling. So college football on CBS is sponsored by Volkswagen, Solomon Smith Barney, Hewlett Packard, and by Exxon. Second down goal at the 10 yard line, Auburn up by six. Rudy Johnson goes left, tries to squirm out a yard, doesn't get much more than that. It'll be third down. Well, two big pass plays in this drive, which is now about to see its ninth play. The big catch by Lorenzo Diamond, and then an even bigger catch by yeah. DeAndre Green. But a tough play on first down when they got into the red zone and, and inside the 10-yard line, because now it's put them in a tough situation. Nothing on second down. Third down and goal from the 10. If they want a touchdown, they almost certainly have to try to throw it here. Robert Johnson is tight to the left side. Three wideouts to the right. Play fake. Leard delivers it incomplete. Good coverage. Another fine defensive stand by Alabama. They gave up a couple big plays, but this time they were not full. Great coverage. Watch the coverage as Leard is looking down the field. I think he wanted to go here to Johnson first. It wasn't there. No receiver open for Auburn. Excellent downfield coverage by the Alabama defense. Damon Duvall had three big field goals last week in the overtime win over Georgia. He's two for two today. This from 27 and really significant to make it a nine point game. Got it. He was three for three last week against Georgia. He came up big against the Bulldogs and that overtime win. He's coming up big again today for the Auburn Tigers. Nine to nothing, Auburn leads. Hi, I'm looking for your foreign video section. Great. I love you. You know what, let me tell you what I need maybe. 918 to go in the rain in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Auburn comes to town for the first time since 1901. This is only the third game they have ever played in this city, and Alabama in 108 years has yet to score against Auburn in Tuscaloosa. Here's the return out to the 19-yard line. And they don't show any signs of doing so today. No, and if they want to have a shot, as you take a look, the last time that neither team scored a touchdown, 1960. And for Alabama to score a touchdown in this one and to have a chance to win, I think two guys need to get their hands on the football and do something. That's Antonio Carter, number two, and Freddie Millens, number 15. They're the only two guys, I think, that can that can take a, a short play and make something big happen for this lethargic offense. Here's the roll by Zhao, flips it out. It's caught by Sam Collins. And he steps out of bounds and stops the clock with a gain to the 30-yard line. That is uh, a tackle made by Rashad Walker, number 37. 8.58 to go in this one. Yard, 
Auburn 31 minutes and change and Alabama just under 20 time of possession. Now we mentioned the absence of scoring the, the first game here was a 48 to nothing win that in 1890 95 and the second game a 17 nothing Auburn victory in 1901 nine nothing in the year 2000. Fake toss, Zao at the feet of his intended receiver. It'll be second down. Dre Fulgham. Each year, the winning team in this game receives the Foy Sportsmanship Trophy, the trophy awarded at halftime of the Auburn Alabama basketball game at the winning team school. The trophy accepted last season by the Tide Sean Alexander. It has been presented every year since the renewal of the rivalry in 1948. That's today's Army Heritage. Second and ten. Zhao rolling right. Chased. Let's it go. Incomplete. Pressure applied by Javor Mills. Sean Alexander is part of the festivities here in this first game played in Tuscaloosa between these two and 99 years brought out the game ball one of many honored as Auburn comes to town. He was at practice Thursday got a chance to talk to the team and uh, you know Mike DuBose mentioned that last year we had some guys step up in the second half and take over the game. Sean Alexander was one of those guys three touchdown runs in the fourth quarter in the game last year. Sal rolling out on third and ten. Flips it in complete. Intended for Arvin Richard. Boy, oh boy. And this crowd is really getting in a restless uh, tone of voice. Three plays in a row. Auburn forces Andrews out to throw without his feet being set. Pressure makes him throw while his feet are moving and just not able to get anything on the ball. And even if the ball is completed to Arvin Richards, Mark Brown is right there to make the play. Lane Bearden on to punt for the eighth time. Robinson at the 30-yard line for Auburn. This one returnable. No, nope. fair catch called. There was good downfield coverage. A 40-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Eight minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the ball game. Nothing Auburn. They have the football. John Lovett, their defensive coordinator, prowling the sidelines. His forces have pitched a shutout thus far. Now, Rudy Johnson with 99 yards on the ground thus far in the game. Behind Ben Lear. Over 100 for the tenth time this season. And we go back to New York and get an update once again from Tim Brando. Vern, you may have the SEC MVP there in Rudy Johnson, but it's certainly a Heisman front runner at the running back position. LaDamian Tomlinson, this one yard plunge against UTEP, all told 27 carries, 268, three touchdowns for that Heisman candidate, LaDamian Tomlinson, LT. Vern? All right, Tim, the weather looks a little <laughs> nicer in Fort Worth at Eamon Carter Stadium than it does here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Second down, Auburn. Hangs on to a 9 nothing lead. Johnson comes right. There he breaks another tackle. And this crowd very dismissive of the tackling effort of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Well, Todd Whitmore, a big defensive tackle, is going to have both hands on him. Watch number 61 get both hands on Rudy Johnson right here, but just not able to bring him down. This is a powerful running back. And that's what Rudy Johnson has done to team after team after team in the Southeastern Conference this year. Fourth quarter means Rudy Johnson time, but he is hobbling a little bit heading to the sideline. He does so with 118 yards for the day. They give it to Heath Evans. And the fullback spins down to the 45-yard line. Tony Dixon with the tackle. Well, Mike DeBose in his final game, of course, is the fourth coach to coach here after Paul Bear Bryant's retirement. Among those honored at the uh, pregame, Gene Stallings, a dear friend 
from days back with the Dallas Cowboys. He, of course, played for Bear Bryant at Texas A&M, was the head coach here, and uh, they won a national championship under Gene in 1992. And the even more thrilling news is that his wife, Ruth Ann, is here, and John Mark, his son, who all of you, I think, remember from Down Syndrome commercials that Gene shot, is here today. He is now 38 years of age. How about Evans. Keith Evans? Rudy Johnson hobbles off the field. They go to the other big back in the backfield, Heath Evans, and say, you carry it for a couple times, and watch Heath Evans hit the hole with some speed and break out of a Kenny Smith tackle. Keeps the legs turning and moving. And another big first down for Auburn. And the clock continues to roll. Rudy back, 118 yards at second, uh, first down and 10. Johnson Alabama can stop the clock just once Darius Gilbert with this tackle I'll bet there are more than a few folks are wondering why Auburn is coming to Tuscaloosa for the first time in 99 years this series was played on uh, the neutral side at Birmingham from 48 until 89 when Pat Dye as the athletic director at Auburn negotiated a deal to have it when it was Auburn's home game to be played in Auburn the Alabama folks kept their home game in Birmingham for 10 years until today. Here's the handoff. Johnson going left. And down at the 29. So just recently were the contracts negotiated so that this game is played here when it's Alabama's home game. The Tennessee game is now played here instead of Birmingham. And Alabama has agreed for the next few years to play some non-conference games at Legion Field in Birmingham. And it took Alabama five tries to beat Auburn at Jordan-Hare Stadium. And Auburn on the verge of beating Alabama in their first try here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Third and three, nearing the five-minute mark. Toss right. Rudy. Great run. Great run, Vern. It doesn't look that flashy, but he knew when to cut it up inside, and he knew how to get the first down. The guy has a feel for how to run the football. Watch him know and see when to cut up. Right there, he plants the right foot, breaks another tackle, and gets forward for the first down. Good feel and timing on the toss sweep. Look at the difference in total yardage. Toss Johnson. This time he's down after a gain of two. Salim Rashid first with the contact. Today's Rigid Tool Scholar Athlete Award goes to Ahmad Galloway of the University of Alabama. Rigid Tool's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama General Scholarship Fund. Second and nine. Four minutes to go. Rudy left four times. Rudy right seven times. <laughs> Rudy up the middle 24 <laughs> times. Why not? Ouch. Third down at the 25. Tackle made by Adam Cox, number 31. Now well, the rain is not as noticeable if you're in the Auburn sideline right That's now. That's right. Not only are the Tigers three minutes and 16 seconds away from victory here, they got that big boost. The Arkansas win over Mississippi State, they now have a continuing chance yeah. to complete a magical season. Third and 11, Johnson. Fumble. Oh, what the, yeah, Alabama. Yes, Alabama's got it. <laughs> I saw the ball still bouncing around and they had blown the whistle. 
Rashid. The first mistake that Rudy Johnson has made today. Take a look at it, the toss sweep again as he cuts it back inside. The helmet of Tony Dixon, number 24, the free safety, knocked the ball loose, and Alabama recovered. Kenny Smith comes up with the football. One timeout remaining, Zao back. Zao deep in the middle, has a man open at the 39-yard line. Antonio Carter, 16-yard gain. They go without a huddle. Now they've got one timeout left. They need to score twice, so they've really got to hurry their pace and their tempo. The clock stops on first downs while they move the chain so you can get them lined up and get the play called without losing too much time. Incomplete, intended for Millens. Until that fumble, this had been Rudy Johnson's day. And the CBS Sports Line stat of the game Rushing yardage, Auburn with 166, Alabama 17. For complete college football coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. That's fumble. Sal, it's tipped. Incomplete. It's a timing throw. You've got to catch the snap, set, and throw, and the snap was low. And the timing was all messed up for Andrews out. This is kind of the way the Alabama season has gone. Low snap, the ball's dropped, the timing's blown, the pass is incomplete. Pretty well sums it up. Mm. 9 of 23 for Zhao. It's third down. Screen pass in the middle. Antonio Carter darts to his left, crosses the 50, first down. Gain of 13, the tackle made by Stanford Simmons. Again, they've really got to pick up the tempo here. Two minutes and 19 seconds left. They need to score twice. They don't necessarily need a touchdown on this drive. They, they have to settle for a field goal and go with an onside kick. They can do that, but they've got to play with a sense of urgency right now. Zhao caught. Dropped. DeMarco McNeil with the sack. Good quick move by McNeil working on Dennis Alexander. Here he is right here. Watch him beat number 73, Alexander. Just a swim move over the top. And an easy sack. Nothing that Andrew Zhao could do on that play. Crimson Tide uses its final timeout, which leaves Mike DeBose with two minutes and two seconds remaining in his Alabama coaching career. Let's find out how we got here. Pretty easy today. Damon Duvall, 22-yard field goal. That made it 3-0. Get used to the name. Damon Duvall, 42-yard field goal. Want to try for a trifecta? Damon Duvall. 27-yard field goal, 9-zip. Sam Collins out of bounds, stopping the clock inside the 50. You know, this performance today by Alabama offensively, yes, they've been inept on offense. They have not been able to generate anything running the football. They've not thrown it effectively. But on the other side, you really have to credit John Lovett, the defensive coordinator for Auburn. They have been on top of everything. They've stuffed the run. They've been in great position on the passing game. This has been a very sound defensive football game for the Auburn Tigers. Up by nine with less than two to go. Zhao, right side, Carter. With the catch, out of bounds, stops the clock with 149 remaining. Alabama now has used its timeouts. Auburn has two remaining. You know, the other thing about this season for Alabama that, that is just kind of surprising to me is Freddie Millens was such a great player last year for the Crimson Tide. And he is in a game like this, has just disappeared. He's disappeared from this offense this season, and in the game today, he's disappeared. Fourth and six, Millens wide right. Zhao will have to do it on his own. He's got a chance. Andrew Zhao, first down, Alabama at the 31. Again, clock stops to move the change, but they have no timeouts. 
No timeouts left for Andrews out. Does a nice job of weaving through traffic, protecting the football, and getting a much needed first down. But he's got to move quickly now with no timeouts left. Chains not yet set. Alabama's ready to go. There's the snap. Zal goes right. Millens in and out of his hands. Clock stops. 128 left in the coaching career here of Mike DeBose. Well, we chatted with Mel Moore, the athletic director, yesterday. I think this is uh, acknowledged as the short list. These are the names that have been bandied about. Butch Davis at Miami, Beamer, Jackie Sherrill, who's an Alabama alum, Jan Gailey with the Dolphins. Mal Moore said he wants to respect the coach's current situations while the season is going on. So didn't want to comment uh, to any intense degree about what's going on in his office. This one incomplete, second down and 10. Don Terry is Thomas, number 54. For Tom Tuberville, in this gloomy night, things couldn't be brighter. Well, what a turnaround. I mean, uh, <laughs> this team has made a, a much greater strides in a shorter period of time than anybody thought. They've got a senior class of 15 guys that have been through some tough times at Auburn and yet have really stuck together. I think the thing that stands out to me about this Auburn football team is their chemistry, their togetherness. They're not the greatest talented team in the conference, but they are a unified bunch. Zhao, left, Richard drops it. One twelve to go in this one. Alabama's gonna try a field goal here because again, they need two scores. So this is not the end of the world. Now we've got one twelve to go. Forty-eight yarder Neil Thomas has kicked three of fifty this season. If they get the field goal and get the onside kick, who knows? They might have a field goal. Nope. Sure. No. The snap was a little bit high, Vern. And Neil Thomas, who has the leg, did not get a solid boot on this one. Watch the snap. It's a little bit high. Nice job by Jonathan Ritchie, the backup quarterback, to field it. But well short on the field goal attempt. And unfortunately for Mike DeBose, the legacy will read only the second team to ever lose eight games in the history of Alabama football. In his first year as head coach, they lost their last four. In his last year as head coach, they will lose their final five. You know what, I'll say this about him, and you can have your own opinion on whether he or not he was a good coach, but he's a stand-up guy, and he has handled this situation here this season like a real man and has done everything with the idea of putting the players first and the University of Alabama first ahead of himself and for that he is to be respected and commended under 30 seconds to go Laird will take a knee Auburn wins in its first visit to Tuscaloosa since 1901. The Tigers are undefeated in Tuscaloosa <laughs> in three centuries. The 1800s, the 1900s, and the year 2000. And they've yet to be scored on either. Presented by Salomon Smith, Barney is Rudy Johnson. 130 yards on 37 carries. 
Watch in December when Solomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year Award Show. Let's go down to Jill Arrington. Congratulations, Coach Tupperville. What a big win in this Iron Bowl to win here in Tuscaloosa. What does this win mean to you? Well, it means so much to the Auburn people. You know, we, we've taken a lot, uh, you know, across the state of the last couple of years because we, we struggle against Alabama, but today was our day. Did you know Mississippi State lost? You're going to the SEC championship. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Rudy Johnson, what a great exploit and a great year that you've had. Another 100 plus yards. How do you keep doing it? Just a team effort. We come out and work hard as a team. It just if you do that, good things will happen. It's paying off for us right now. Did you ever think at the beginning of this year that you would have such an impact on this team? If I had help from my teammates, I knew good things would happen. And they've helped me a lot all through the all through the all season and everything. It's paying off right now. All right, congratulations on a great win. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jill. Final score, 9-0. Auburn comes to Tuscaloosa and goes home a victor. For Jill Arrington, Todd Blackledge, I, Bert Lundquist, saying goodbye from a rainy evening in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The final score, once again, 9-zip. We go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. In the history of their storied rivalry, the first time since 1901. What do the three games played here in Tuscaloosa have in common? Well, Auburn's won all of them, and Auburn has shut out Alabama all three times. 48 to nothing Auburn in 1895, 17 to nothing Auburn in 1901, and today in the year 2000, Auburn 9, Alabama 0. That's news the Auburn fans were wanting to hear, but the news got even better for them when Arkansas defeated Mississippi State in overtime. State's loss, coupled with Auburn's win, gives the Auburn Tigers the SEC Western Division Championship. So two weeks from today, the Tigers are heading to Atlanta to play the Florida Gators in the SEC Championship. Let's take a look back at Iron Bowl 2000, how the SEC West was won. Two hours before kickoff, the first ever Tiger Walk in Tuscaloosa. Alabama fans got their chance to cheer before kickoff when Sean Alexander, Bama's all-time leading rusher, ran the game ball to midfield. An emotional day for Mike Dubos, his final game as the Crimson Tide's head coach. Big play for the Tide on its first possession. Andrew Zow to Jason McCadley, 30 yards to the Tiger 28. But the drive ended when Zhao's next pass was tipped at the goal line by Stanford Simmons and intercepted by Auburn's Rob Pate. Late in the first quarter on third and five with Alabama thinking pass, the Tigers catch the tide off guard. Heath Evans on the draw, 34 yards to the Bama nine. Damon Duvall's 22-yard field goal made it 3-0 Auburn at the end of the first quarter. Late in the half, Auburn on the move again. Ben Lear to DeAndre Green for 17 yards into Bama territory. Damon Duvall drilled a 42-yarder to put the Tigers on top, 6-0 at the half. Third quarter, Auburn was knocking on the door, but Ben Lear's pass is picked off. Ben's next pass was also intercepted, but the Alabama offense was unable to cash in on those turnovers. Fourth quarter, Ben Leard starting to heat up on a cold, cold day. 27 yards to Lorenzo Diamond and 31 big yards to DeAndre Green. First and goal at the Bama six. Damon Duvall's third field goal of the game made it 9-0 Auburn. How's it feel to score all the points in the Iron Bowl? It feels good, you know. It's a big thing we know. It's going to be a tough game coming in. You know you're going to Atlanta now, right? Oh, yeah, I heard um, they were saying on the sideline that Arkansas had beat Mississippi State. You know, we just wanted to come over here and focus, stay focused the whole game. You know, we knew we were coming in a hostile crowd. We wanted to just come over here and execute, and that's what we did. Damon Duvall should be the player of the game because he kicked three big field goals, and we won the game. Oh, hey, this is the most fantastic thing. I'm so proud. Everybody, I tell you what, it's just great. It's great. I heard Mississippi State lost. You ready to go to Atlanta? We're going to Atlanta. Ben, you ready to go to Atlanta? We're ready. We gotta get. We gotta get ready for Florida. They kicked our tails last time. Last time we went to the swamp. We just had to get ready next time. So the Auburn Tigers, with a record of nine and two, are on their way to Atlanta to play the Florida Gators two weeks from today. 
over at the Georgia Dome. What about Alabama? Disappointing season for the Crimson Tide. Remember, preseason, they were ranked third in the nation. They end the season with a record of three wins and eight losses. Mike Dubos, his final game here at the Capstone, his four-year era ends with a record of 24 wins and 23 losses. Derek Steyer is talking right now to Alabama coach Mike Dubose. We'll hear from Coach Dubose tonight in the 10 o'clock report. Rudy Johnson, we didn't see him in the highlights, but you can bet he was a factor today. Carried the ball 37 times, gained 130 yards. Rudy's running, some timely passing from Ben Leard, and three big field goals from Damon Duvall. It all adds up to an Auburn 9, Alabama 0 final score in Iron Bowl 2000. One programming reminder coming up tonight just after the 6 o'clock report, Turkey Day 2000 will preview the Tuskegee Golden Tigers and the Alabama State Hornets and their big 77th annual Turkey Day Classic coming up Thanksgiving afternoon. And one more thing, a few Auburn fans at Brian Denny Stadium, they've already got the score, Auburn 9, Alabama nothing. I can just imagine what it looks like at Toomer's Corner right now. You can bet there's a lot of toilet paper flying. That's the story from Tuscaloosa. Mark and Debbie? Jeff, I don't, can, you hear, can you hear us back here at the station? I know it's, it's pretty loud there, but uh, yeah. the crowd has, has kind of left there. It looks pretty empty there. Have they gotten out of there okay? Yeah, everybody, the crowd obviously, 90% Alabama fans. And once the rain started to come down and their team started to fall behind, they headed for the exit. So they're probably home right now wondering who their next head coach will be and looking ahead to next year. So there's a party in Auburn, but it's kind of a depressing night if you're an Alabama fan, especially here in Tuscaloosa. All right.